。亲爱的弟兄姐妹、朋友们，主日平安！感谢主，我们又迎来新的一周。今天是一月三十一日，是主显节后的第四个主日。欢迎您参加普林冈第一长老会和硅谷福乐长老会联合在线主日崇拜。在过去这个星期，硅谷迎来了很多的雨水。我们感谢天父日以继夜的护理，使我们可以居住在这片土地上，丰衣足食。我们也感谢天父，在这个寒冷的雨季，保守众弟兄姐妹有火热的灵性追求。在过去这个月，教会进行的安德烈个人宣教运动期间。感谢圣灵在我们心里做那美好的上工，也恳求圣灵继续来眺望众弟兄姐妹传福音的热心，为我们心中挂念的、想起来的每一个家人、亲人、朋友、同学，或者邻居，或者是你遇到的一些陌生人，有机会传福音给他们的，让我们。持续的来为他们祷告，常常关心他们，为他们的需要，特别是灵性的需要来守望。同时，在努力传福音的时候，我们也恳求圣灵兼顾众弟兄姐妹每一日的读经灵修祷告，使我们的灵性生命每一天都有主话语的喂养、引导和劝勉，在。竭力为主做工的同时，不致身心力竭、灵性疲乏。以赛亚书四十章二十九节告诉我们：“疲乏的他赐能力，软弱的他加力量。”感谢天父赐给我们全新的一周，也愿主照着他宝贵话语的应许，赐给我们每一天有够用的力量。使我们能够靠主刚强。现在，亲爱的弟兄姐妹，让我们预备心，敞开心，一起来敬拜那一位曾经被杀，如今正坐在宝座上的神的羔羊。宣召诗篇二十四章七到十节。众城门呐、啊，你们要抬起头来；永久的门户，你们要被举起。那荣耀的王将要进来。荣耀的王是谁呢？就是有力有能的耶和华，在战场上有能的耶和华。众城门呐、啊，你们要抬起头来；永久的门户。你们要把头抬起，那荣耀的王将要进来。荣耀的王是谁呢？万军之耶和华，他是荣耀的王。高处。
亲爱的弟兄姐妹，我们同心来祷告。我们在天上的阿爸父神，感谢你的恩典，在这个清晨的时间，我们又来到你的面前，要向你感恩，因为宇宙万物都是从你而来。每天清晨我们起来，我们就向你感恩，你的恩典是数数不尽的。每当我们吸收到阳光、空气和宇宙万物的每一个自然的美，我们都要向你感恩。我们特别感谢你，在过去的一个星期，你赐给我们很多的雨水。谢谢你，让我们晓得每一天都能够向你感恩。亲爱的天父，我们再次来到你面前，再一次用一个。惭愧、悔改的心来到你面前，因为你在世界上所创造的一切的都是非常美好，但是当罪来到这个世界的时候，我们就堕落了，我们就软弱了。我们再一次来到你面前，祈求你来饶恕我们。主耶稣，你用你的宝血再次接近我们。我们过去一个星期所做的，都是不讨你喜悦的，得罪人，得罪你的。求你再一次来接近我们，疗恕我们。主耶稣，我们谢谢你。当你在世上的时候，你教导我们要学习的爱人如己。你曾经赐给我们一条新的命令，如此的说：“我赐给你们一条新命令，那是叫你们彼此相爱。我怎么样爱你们，你们也要讲相爱。”谢谢耶稣，因为你来到你这个世上的时候，我们得到了很多很多的教导。你要我们学习如何的饶恕敌人，如何的学习忍耐、谦卑。如何的学习爱人如己？就这个时候，我们特别向你祈求，因为我知道我们在我们的周遭有许多的朋友、许多的同事、许多的亲人，他们还不认识你。主，我们在今年教会的主题是个人宣教。主，我们谢谢你，你先将福音传给我们。我们能够接受你成为我们的个人的救主，但是我们也希望能够将这个美好的福音传给我们爱的人，让他们也能够共享神你的福音。就在这个三个月里面的安德烈运动，我们要学习，当使徒安德烈看到你见到弥赛亚的时候，他迫不及待的将这个福音传给他的哥哥使徒彼得。主啊，你给我们有这样的心智，也给我们有这样的智慧，来将这美好的福音传给我们周遭的朋友。主，我们知道我们的口才不好，但是我们知道，若是我们有信心，我们有圣灵的带领，我们必定能够将你介绍给我们的朋友。主，你带领我们，带领整个教会，在整个。个人宣教的工作，能够在这几个月里面，我们能学习怎么样来为主你传福音。感谢你的恩典，我们将我们的教会再次交托在你手中，在我们当中有病痛的、有心灵忧伤的、有需要的，主你看顾他们。这时候，我们要预备我们的心，来到你面前来敬拜你，求主。你借助今天的信息，再一次能够激励我们，愿意更加的来跟随你，愿意更加的爱你。我们将祷告，不配，奉耶稣基督的名。以弗所书三章十六到十八节。求他按着他丰盛的荣耀，结着他的灵，叫你们心里的力量刚强起来，使基督因你们的信
，住在你们心里，叫你们的爱心有根有基，能以和众圣徒一同明白基督的爱是何等长阔高深。
Good morning. I got to tell you, there's at least one good thing that has come from the COVID-19 pandemic. Those mandatory stay-at-home orders have produced ample opportunity for reorganizing, downsizing, and cleaning. Many of us, instead of allowing the stress and anxiety, the uncertainty of the situation to completely overwhelm us, we've taken back control perhaps of the only thing that we thought we could control, our homes. We've decluttered the bathroom, reorganized the kitchen, redesigned the home office for Zooming, culled old files, and perhaps even digitized important documents to place in Dropbox for easy and immediate access. It's also been a great time to edit bathroom closets, which, by the way, is code for filling garbage bags with clothes, shoes, and old toys for donation. With the help of two friends in masks, I actually got rid of a whole storage locker. Hallelujah. It's not just our family homes that have been getting reorganized. We have also been reorganizing the family of God, the church. The week before those first stay-at-home orders, our two medical mission trips scheduled to leave in March were both canceled, as was all midweek programming, our care conference, and the women's retreat. Then we were told there would be no more home or hospital visitation, memorial services, internments, or table fellowship. Our church's trip to Oberammergau, two years in the making, canceled in a moment. But thanks to tech-savvy staff that Graham has hired, like Carrie, Dan, and Stephen, staff who were already dreaming of our church family moving into the digital age, Burl Press reorganized and went online almost immediately with worship, congregational meetings, and a whole host of virtual community opportunities. Every day has been an adventure. Don't you love our new website? I sure do. And by the way, it's not just the younger generation that has made the transition. Don Carroll, who is in his nine days, was poised to begin leading uh, his six-week memoirs writing class on March 19th. On the 12th of March, he texted out that it was indefinitely postponed. But then, just two weeks after the class was to begin, he began to teach it, Zooming sessions. So far, there have been 25 writing classes and still counting. The youngest person in that class is 75. We are a church family filled with adaptable, persistent, and determined seniors as well as young people. And by the way, thank you so much, Paul Chapman, for all of your help with our technology. Another area of life that has been ripe for cleaning and reorganizing during this pandemic is our spiritual lives. When I think about spiritual spring cleaning, a sermon by Robert Munger called My Heart is Christ Home comes immediately to mind. Bob was one of my professors at Fuller Seminary. Bob originally preached this sermon over in Berkeley in 1954. Since then, millions and millions of copies of the meditation have been printed and distributed by InterVarsity Press and the Billy Graham Foundation. I suspect that many of you have read it. If you haven't, you can still get it on Amazon or a free version in PDF form online. I first read this wonderful sermon the year after I graduated from college, right after I had recommitted my life to Christ. 
Since the sermon is about inviting Christ into your heart and what it takes to make Christ feel at home there, it was for me the best sermon ever. The home tour and real estate metaphor that Bob used in the sermon communicated to me powerfully since at that time I was working in real estate while studying for my real estate broker's license. In the sermon, Bob writes, One evening, I invited Jesus Christ into my heart. He came into the darkness of my heart and turned on the light. He built a fire on the hearth and banished the chill. He started music where there had been stillness, and he filled the emptiness with his own loving, wonderful fellowship. This scriptural, the scriptural basis for this, this inviting of Christ into Bob's heart and Christ coming into his heart is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It's, it's the prayer that Paul preaches uh, for the congregation. I pray that Christ will make his home in your hearts through faith. I pray that you may have your roots and foundation in love so that you, together with all God's people, may have the power to understand how broad and long, how high and deep is Christ's love. This prayer had been realized in Bob's life. Christ came to dwell in Bob's heart by the movement of of the Holy Spirit. As host, then, Bob began to show Christ around. The first room Bob took Christ into was the library. The study of the mind is the heart's control room. As they entered and looked around at the books on the shelves, the magazines on the table, and the pictures on the wall, Bob became a little uncomfortable, embarrassed, if you will. There were some books there that he thought that Christ's eyes were just plain too pure to behold, and some trashy literature on the table. There were also imaginations and thoughts in Bob's mind that he felt ashamed to be thinking in Christ's presence. So he was convicted, and he turned to Christ and he said, Master, I know that this room needs radical alteration. Will you help me to make it what it ought to be? Help me to bring every thought into captivity to you? Sure, Christ responded. Glad to help. First of all, take the things that you are reading and looking at that aren't helpful or true and just throw them out. Now, put on the empty shelves the books of the Bible and meditate on them. If Bob had had this conversation with Christ today in the context of Burl Press 2020, Christ might have suggested in addition that Bob stop watching so much news and start tuning into church online. Perhaps download our free Right Now media app. Open our daily prayers and choose to participate in some form of virtual community. As for those unhelpful thoughts and imaginative pictures on the walls of Bob's mind, Christ said to Bob, you will have difficulty controlling these images, but here is an aid. He then gave Bob a full-size portrait of himself. Hang this centrally, he said, on the wall of the mind. Perhaps the 2020 equivalent of this would be to simply start the day with centering prayer, to silence the mind before beginning the day, maybe with the curie elegion, Lord, have mercy, or maybe even the simpler prayer, come, Lord Jesus. After this, Bob took Christ into the dining room, the room of appetites and desires. 
Christ graciously sat down in the table and asked, what's on the menu? Bob said, well, my favorite dishes are money, academic degrees, and stocks, with newspaper articles of fame and fortune as side dishes. When these were placed before Christ, he didn't eat them. Confused and a little hurt, since Bob enjoyed all of these things so much, he asked, Master, don't you care for this food? What's the trouble? Christ answered, I have meat to eat that you know not of. My meat is to do the will of him who sent me. If you want food that really satisfies you, seek the will of the Father, not your own pleasures, not your own desires, not your own satisfaction. Seek to please me. That food will satisfy you. Christ, I believe, had a great point. There is nothing that satisfies more than doing God's will. A few weeks ago during watch, in response to studying the stories of Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, I challenged the group to try eliminating the blame game from their repertoire of responses to events in their lives. Following that Bible study, I went to the beach for a walk. At one point, I took this video of a horse exiting without the rider. Oh, baby. As you can see at the end of that video, I'm not framing the horse very well. Because as the horse came ashore, she got spooked. Finding the pathway straight up from the beach blocked, she turned and headed towards me. 2,000 pounds of pure muscle of a spooked horse running at full gallop towards you is a scary experience. I threw up my hands, seeking to calm the animal. Whoa, baby. But the next thing I knew, I was sprawled in the sand. The horse was running down the beach helter-skelter. The horse's owner uh, swam ashore and came to check on me. Having just challenged the women of watch to not play the blame game, when the owner asked um, if I was okay, I simply said, yeah, I I'm fine. Go find your horse. She's scared. She needs you. A really nice Samaritan, good Samaritan couple helped me to my feet, then helped me to the car to drive to urgent care to get some x-rays. While I was... In getting those x-rays, the owner of the horse came to the clinic to see how I was. Due to COVID protocols, she wasn't allowed in, so she simply took a piece of paper, wrote down her name, Debbie, her telephone number, and asked me to call. As soon as I left the clinic, I did call to let her know that there were no broken bones. She told me that the beach ride was something her friends had planned for her 59th birthday. That was that very day. After wishing her a happy birthday, we hung up. The next day, while watching the video over and over and consulting with a couple of horse-savvy friends, Haley Baird and Kim Engelman, I figured out with them that the saddle slipping to the side had spooked the horse, and that was, it was probably that same saddle swinging under the horse that had hit me as the horse had turned to avoid impact. I called the owner a second time to tell her what I had figured out. She said that she hadn't slept all night, playing the event over and over in her mind. 
but that the story of the saddle hitting me also explained the injuries on her horse's legs. After we hung up, I sent her the video. She responded to the video in a text saying, she looked so calm and pretty until the saddle turned. Thank you for being you. Debbie also sent me a picture of her riding her horse in a rodeo event. With those two texts, I smiled. I had a new friend. Seeking to do the will of God by not playing the blame game felt great, even though my leg hurt. Like Christ told Bob Munger, there is nothing as satisfying as doing God's will. After showing Christ the dining room, Bob took him through a few other rooms in his heart, the living room, the work room, the rec room, and a locked hall closet. We, like Bob Munger, have the opportunity to invite Christ into our homes and show our Lord around. But I think that the rooms and spaces that we have in our homes today are a little different from those that Bob had in his home. Say, for instance, the family room, which didn't even exist before the 1960s. It is, for many of us, the center of family life. What would Christ say to you upon visiting this room in your home where media and technology abound? Are you playing games, enjoying the family time in there to the glory of God? Are you creating new family memories there? Are you engaging in conversations that build people up? Uh, or is something else happening? What is the spirit of the room? Are the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control being enjoyed there? Or is it the spirits of Chardonnay, Budweiser, and Johnny Walker? Is that what's controlling the atmosphere? How about the bathroom? Are you looking into and through the mirrors to see how Christ is at work in you? Or simply checking your outward appearance so as to make a better impression on others? Are you adjusting your persona in the mirror or seeking to see your true self? with Christ as guide. How about in the kitchen? Are you creating and serving nurturous spiritual meals for the family? With everyone at home most of the time, what a great opportunity to get together for family devotions, to actually enjoy face-to-face -face community, to tell the old, old stories of Jesus and his love. It's also a time for families to pray together. There are so many prayer concerns. Children, as well as adults, have real prayer requests. In prayer, we can host Christ in conversation with the whole family holding hands around the table. Couples praying and reading scripture together in the home brings joy to Christ's heart. And those of you who live alone, this is a perfect time to deepen your relationship with Christ by spending more time with Christ in prayer or reading scripture. If you'd like, we'd be more than happy to send you our Bible in a year reading plan. What about the memorabilia that's proudly displayed on the walls and in the trophy cases of your home? What are they celebrating? Are there participation trophies there? Academic degrees? As you show Christ around uh, your room, would he be seeing anything there that represents your love for Christ? 
or Christ's love for you? A cross, perhaps, a nativity scene, a Bible, a painting of a church. As I asked myself this question, remembering all of the signed jerseys uh, that are on the walls of our family room, I thought I wouldn't find very much. So I took a walk around the house. Almost immediately, I spotted this picture in our breakfast room. Looks pretty much like a, a pretty picture of flowers, but not to me. To me, this is a picture of the ever-present kingdom of God. It's a long story. Ask me sometime and I'll share it with you. The point is, however, that we don't have to hang a cathedral-worthy picture of Jesus in our living room to be reminded of the old, old story of Jesus and his love. In fact, as I walked through the house, I found that there were many objects sitting around on tables, hanging on the walls, um, that contained wonderful memories of special moments with Jesus. There is the cross that Manje Kim gave me as we left Honduras one year. It reminds me of all of the wonderful mission trips that this church has taken through the years. Seeing it prompts me to pray for Dr. Davila, uh, Constance uh, Timon, uh, Olivia Timon, and all of our other international missions like Amor Ministries. There are also in our home photographs of Franklin. Franklin is God's greatest gift to me. The story of how he came to be my son is the story of Jesus' love. There is also the family Swedish Bible that my dad handed down to me on the day that I was ordained. It connects me to the faith of my Lutheran grandparents who brought it to this country from Sweden. Then there's that huge dining room table where we celebrate Easter and Christmas and Thanksgiving dinners with friends and family. As I grew up, we may have been CEO Christians. You know what that means, right? Christmas and Easter only Christians. But still, Christ showed up when invited to the table. Wherever I turned in the home, there was another story of Jesus and his love. Bob Munger, after showing Christ around the rooms of his heart, decided that the best way to get his heart in order was to transfer title to his heart over to Christ. He said, Lord, you have been a guest, and I have been the host. From now on, I'm going to be the servant. You are going to be master and Lord. Running as fast as he could to the strong box, Bob took out the title deed to the house and to his heart, describing the assets, liabilities, location, and condition. He eagerly signed it over so his heart would belong to Christ alone for time and eternity. That is a great step of faith. It's a great idea. If you haven't already done so, all you need to do is take a moment right now and give your life to Christ saying something like, Lord, I'm yours. All of me, heart and soul, from now unto eternity. Lord, I am yours. All of me heart and soul, from now until eternity. For those of you who have already given your lives to Christ, I hope that our journey this morning through our modern homes may have encouraged you a little bit to perhaps uh, start a spiritual practice of sharing the love of God with others through storytelling. 
by placing objects that bring about memories of Christ in strategic places in our homes. We can be reminded of those stories as we walk by them each day. Those objects can also prompt us, when appropriate, to share those stories of Jesus is love with families. Eventually, when we can once again host friends and neighbors in our homes, we can also be better prepared to tell the stories when a visitor inquires as to why a particular odd object is sitting so prominently on the coffee table or fireplace mantle. As we do that, the Spirit of Christ will be present, bringing the old, old story of Jesus and his love to life. These stories, these stories of Jesus' love are more real and more life-giving than anything that you can find on Netflix, Amazon Prime, or Hulu. May we all engage in storytelling. Amen. Xi 下个星期天二月七日的主日晨祷会十点开始请见屏幕以圣灵保卫师的交通与团契